your time now is 616. So glad you're with us. Okay, now to another animal story that's maybe not so nice. Just picture it. You're walking out to your swimming pool. You're going to go take a dip. Yeah, then you see that. Well, we came in unannounced, but that shouldn't be a problem. If your zoo's clean, you should be able to show us around. This test reveals your true health. Log off Facebook. And plug in to your relationships that matter most. Afternoon, it's about 1.19 here, and I learned just how to say hello in Turkish, so marhaba. Good morning to you. It is 4.30, and we are going to begin with that breaking news this morning. An attempt to steal a car has just led to a police chase. It's a good way NASA came up with to show sort of what's going on. We need to all stand up during the break. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Okay. There you so go. We'll be back. <laughs> we'll be, we're going to go walk and stand up. We'll be back on the other end. You're going to be in the room with a bunch of people. We're going to be talking on your computer. With Jeffrey Hernandez's salary, we could keep some of those teachers on. Why did you hire him? So we're looking for those trees there. We'll continue to scour it out, look at what people are wearing, and then the all-important moment with the dress when Kate Middleton walks out. We will continue to follow that. In the meantime, people across the pond, they aren't the only ones celebrating the royal nuptials. He did say a lot today. I'm Emily Pantelides. This was all moments ago from Pensacola when the president praised the resilience of the people living in the Gulf Coast. This speech, of course, coming just hours after he met with Governor Christ. State leaders, like leaders in the Gulf, are saying the administration is just not doing enough to respond to the spill. Sentiments he directly addressed in his speech minutes ago. Here in Florida alone, we stand to lose more than $2 billion in cleanup and economic costs. And that's why Florida wants the president to provide more federal response to this crisis. Earlier this morning, we spoke with Chief Financial Officer Alex Sink about the meeting. My message to the, and you know what, just send VP the bill. Okay, well, after this trip, the president is going to be addressing the entire nation just a little later tonight. If you want to watch that, it will be right here. CBS 12 will carry the address live at 8 p.m., and you can see the speech in its entirety. And at 12.03, want to take you outside, take a live look outside from our Kravis cam. You know, it's already hot and steamy, and Michael Ehrenberg is standing by live to tell us more about our Tuesday forecast. Michael, is there a chance we might get some afternoon thunderstorms to cool us off? Yeah. Happening right now at noon, the sheriff's office and the community are both coming together, rolling up their sleeves for a blood drive in honor of a deputy still recovering from a dangerous boating accident over the weekend. CBS 12's Althea Paul is live at the drive as it still continues this noon. Althea. Well, with hurricane season on the way, I know you're probably thinking of getting prepared. Well, so is St. Lucie West. With 1,800 miles of storm drains, St. Lucie West service workers are attaching pipes with mini submarines. Take a look at this. Yeah, think of them as underwater maids. They travel through pipes, checking for debris that could clog pipes, increasing the chances for floods. The whole thing controlled just by a joystick with a camera attached so the folks above ground can see it all. This is a, a we actually print them off, DVDs, videos, present them to the folks who have the issues and problems. Well, here's an interesting tidbit for you. Workers at the St. Lucie West Public Works Department say their subs are the smaller versions of the ones being used right now on the BP oil spill. So interesting stuff there. All right, still ahead. Are you thinking of giving your money to help out the crisis on the coast? If so, we have a warning for you. There are already scammers out there. We have tips to help you make sure your money goes to the right place. Doctors in Britain say a new medicine that only costs $5 a dose could save 100,000 lives a year. The drug stops bleeding and trauma patients, but until now, it has only been used in scheduled operations. It's called TXA. In a study spanning 40 countries, researchers gave trauma patients TXA and found it reduced the chances of bleeding to death by 15 percent. Doctors were worried TXA might increase side effects like blood clots, strokes or heart attacks, but say they found no evidence of that in their study. For something you do that. Those who back the study say TXA could save as many lives as mandatory seatbelts and tougher drunk driving laws. British doctors say tens of thousands of people needlessly bleed to death each year. She's a decorated Olympic swimmer, and even at 40, she's still giving the newcomers a run for their money. And in an exclusive interview, Gary Whittam sat down with her. Dara Torres is who we're talking about. He asked her what it's like to compete at her age about being a mother. And the big question, will she compete in the 2012 Games? CBS 12 News. Can I say that I think she's put all of us to shame? <laughs> she's inspiring. I'll she tell is. you what, to be able to compete yeah. at that level, because most of the people she's competing against are teenagers, mm -hmm. especially at swimming. Yeah, yeah. She's working hard, you know. Tons of jumping in the off. pool.
I know. This afternoon, uh, right? Yeah, Build yeah, those yeah. muscles. I know, speaking of sweating. Bye. <laughs> Doesn't he look like he could use a good home? Yeah. I hope Benji gets a good home. That's going to do it here for us at noon. Thanks so much for joining us. NASA is now telling us the space shuttle is not going to launch tomorrow at 9 o'clock. They postponed today early, or they told us probably 9 o'clock tomorrow, but that's not going to happen. The notes I have is they're going to try for Sunday. If that doesn't work, they're going to try for Monday. The latest they'll launch is Tuesday, and if it doesn't happen Tuesday, they're going to scrub it all together until April. Now, this has been a mission that's had some problems in February it was supposed to launch. It was postponed. And then, of course, today we were all here ready for the launch and then scrubbed because of a hydrogen gas leak in the external tank. Now, throughout most of our newscast, I've been showing this picture. And let me get it up for you here because it's kind of hard to see, but it's a good way NASA came up with to show sort of what's going on. This is the external tank. And right here under here, this black section is where the hydrogen fuel leak is. Now, we don't know the extent of how bad this problem is. At first, when we'd spoken to NASA, they said it wasn't a huge deal. They thought they could fix it in 24 hours. But now at this news conference, of course, they said that perhaps it is a bigger problem than originally thought. Let me step to the side for just a second and let you take a look behind me live at the space shuttle, still docked here. And of course, the countdown clock going, but really not going anywhere, certainly at least not until Sunday. The launch team is currently in the process of draining the external fuel tank to find out exactly what the problem is. So we're going to be here for a few more hours, just kind of following what's going on. And then, of course, we will continue to follow this and uh, see what happens. So, guys, you know, we were expecting a launch today, a night launch. It was supposed to be a beautiful sight, but scrubbed once, and who knows when it'll be scrubbed again. And obviously, it seems like, uh, Emily, the problem is much more serious than they first thought, if they're going to scrub it to at least Sunday. How potentially dangerous was this gas leak? Well, you know, if you remember back to missions past, the hydrogen gas leak could be a very, very big problem. So right now it's not clear how this happened, and it's not clear the extent. So they need to go into this shuttle, look at what's going on, and that's sort of what's going to take them a long time. They thought 24 hours, Juan Carlos, but really to go in there and determine the extent of the problem, it's not going to be 24 hours. So again, we'll keep you updated. We'll be back here if we know anything else throughout the rest of the newscast. But uh, once again, a shuttle scrub but we will keep our eyes on it and let you know what happens back to you i'm in shock complete and utter shock that's heidi Speronis, a dance teacher at bach middle who was just told her 12-year career here at the school is over it was an exemplary evaluation as it has been for 12 years and the next sentence was uh, you know i'm gonna have to, i'm not gonna renew your contract but about a month ago the school board said no teachers were going to lose their jobs and the budget was balanced at the same time the school board hired a new chief academic officer jeffrey hernandez who will be paid a hundred and eighty thousand a year so we wanted answers wanted to know why the school board would hire somebody for hundred and eighty plus thousand dollars a year at a time like this and we also wanted to know why the school board said no teachers would be losing their jobs and teachers are losing their jobs with Jeffrey Hernandez's salary we could keep some of those teachers on why did you hire him because uh, mr. Hernandez is an asset to our school district more than extra teachers yes he warrants the one hundred and eighty thousand dollars you're paying him yes when we asked the superintendent about teachers he was emphatic teachers whose contracts are not being renewed have nothing to do with budget cuts but listen to this so your principal told you it was about the budget correct teachers are out of work how do you justify no, teachers that teachers are not out of work because of the budget you're mischaracterizing that how because it's not a layoff there are teachers right now that don't have a job and have not been told that they're going to be reassigned what do you say to those teachers I would have to repeat what I've already said to you. Teachers that are on contract with us, regular contract, will be reassigned. Teachers that have any type of performance issue and are not renewed would not. We tried to speak to Chief Academic Officer Jeffrey Hernandez. So far, no comment. In West Palm Beach, Emily Pantelides, CBS 12. But thank you so much for waking up with us. I'm Emily Pantelides. Hopefully your day's getting off to a good start as we get you caught up on all the news of the day. We just had some crazy weather. You talk about what's going on in the north. We move you to a developing story this morning. Right now, former President Bill Clinton still in the hospital. He's recovering from heart surgery. Now, he should be released a little bit later today. Here's CBS 12's Wendy.
Andy Gillette. She's in New York City with the very latest. Chrysler wants to boost minivan sales with a new money back return deal, but this is going to come with some heavy strings attached. Here's how it works. Trade in your old ride to buy a 2010 minivan. And if you're not happy, return it for a refund within 60 days, no questions asked. But here's the kicker. You cannot get your old car back and the minivan cannot come back with more than 4,000 miles on it or more than $200 worth of damage. If you're still interested, the deal runs through the end of March. Your time now is 616. So glad you're with us. Let's talk to you about the government widening its investigation into Bernie Madoff's record Ponzi scheme. Well, Bloomberg's Jane King, she's at the New York Stock Exchange. She has a look at that and a look at the numbers. We are going to get straight to that breaking news. Investigators are apparently on the scene of an overnight house fire. Homeowners are safe. They even help their neighbors out. Police say a Port St. Lucie six-year-old kicked her pregnant principal, then had another violent outburst. Now police are sending the young woman to a mental facility. This according to published reports. Now police are telling us that, again, she kicked her pregnant principal in the stomach. Her mother disputes the report and says her daughter should not have been cuffed or sent to a mental facility. All right, well, another local city is approving a moratorium on pain clinics. This time, North Palm Beach. Village leaders made the unanimous vote last night, ending all new applications to build these so-called pill mills. West Palm Beach and Palm Beach County approved similar ordinances. We're told water tests will start today in the acreage homes affected by the cancer cluster. That's according to published reports also. Samples of well and tap water will go on for several days. Federal help is expected to come next week. More than 300 employees at Piper Aircraft just got pink slips again. Last year, the company announced it was being sold. Then many of them would be laid off. But now, according to published reports, that status has been changed from laid off to terminated. No reason behind the decision, but the company released a statement saying it would recall qualified former employees before hiring off the street if anything changes. Check this out, caught on tape. Cameras rolling as students turn a snowball fight into a brawl. Just look at this, a major fight. What well, you see is students watching, cheering, encouraging a rolling wave of violence. Brutal blows being exchanged between students. Boys battled boys, girls attacked girls. It all happened in Dallas. They've been getting some record snowfall, as you may know. But here's the deal, the students there still had to go to school. The problem is teachers and security guards did not. We're concerned that uh, several staff members didn't provision for those students. So listen to this. One student injured so badly, he had to go to a local hospital. And that is going to lead us to this morning's wake-up call. We have been chit-chatting about this story all day in our newsroom. Should school districts just cancel classes in bad weather, especially if they know teachers may not make it in? We want your thoughts. Email us at wakeupcall at cbs12.com. If you send us an email in time, we might get to read it on the air. Well, this is one way to get rid of all the snow up north. A four-legged friend in Cincinnati helped out with snow cleanup. Molly, the dog's owner, look how cute that is, uses the snow blower to pave the walkway and then Molly starts to chomp down on the snow. As you can see, there was so much snowfall recently, even little Molly couldn't keep up. I think Molly could clean the sidewalk just by kind of like nice, eating her right? way through. How does her mouth not get cold? <laughs> CBS 12 Daybreak coming right back on this Friday morning. Yes, but first, here's a look at what's coming up next on The Early Show.